And November 13th was really important because that was the day that the grand jury that was supposedly investigating the shooting of Teron Lewis and whether the police had committed any crime when they did that came back, as everybody expected, and exonerated the police. Said police didn't do nothing wrong in killing this brother on that day. So people were already upset about that. So now the police move on our building. Hundreds of people are now out on the streets watching this affair. This is when they, when they rush to get the brother, to arrest him, they push us back against the wall. Pepper sprayed me in the face. Pepper sprayed Sister Kinara Zima in the face and arrested the brother. Hundreds of Africans now out on the streets, standing in front of the Uhura house on both sides of the streets, just watching. The police carrying on, riding up and down in front of the Uhura house, five in a car, guns sticking out of the doors, which are partially open and what have you, and the people just standing there watching them, right up and down, up and down. In the meantime, we had already been putting out leaflets announcing that our regular, at our regular 6.30 meeting, we were going to be talking about the verdict that came from the grand jury. At 6 o'clock, the police put up barricades on the streets on both sides of the Uhura house, turned people around, told them they couldn't come to the meeting. They said, you come to the meeting, we're going to put you in jail or do something worse to you. That was at 6 o'clock. Hundreds of people out on the streets. The police now have begun using pepper spray to try to make people leave the area. Some of the people are running into the auditorium, getting away from the police using pepper spray. spray. About 100 or so people were in the auditorium. Then I'm trying to calm the people down on the inside because of the police antics going on where hundreds of people are still outside. And the police, and the brother comes up to me and says, uh, the police have said that over the bullhorn that this is an unlawful assembly and that we've got five minutes to get out of the building or they're going to shoot tear gas into the auditorium. They began spraying people at the door of the auditorium with pepper gas, pepper spray, so that they couldn't close the doors. 30 seconds later, after the announcement, they started shooting tear gas into the auditorium. What you got to understand is there were something like 300 policemen outside the building. They didn't just have the St. Petersburg Police Department, they had the Florida Highway Patrol, the Pinellas County Sheriff Department, and police from neighboring cities. 300 or more cops were outside our building. They used all the tear gas that they had in the city of St. Petersburg. They didn't have no more tear gas when they finished shooting tear gas on our building. They used helicopters and they had a small plane, at least one small plane that they used against us. Tear gas coming into the building. There were babies in that building. There were children and women and men in the building and people are screaming, the women trying to get to their children and take care of them and trying to get out of the rear of the building. And when they would open the door to the rear, they run into a wall of tear gas because the cops have shot tear gas not only in the auditorium, but everywhere around the building. The people, they, they were shooting tear gas into a, a tree uh, behind our building, and it set in a fire, the canister set in a fire, and threatened the vehicle, a van behind, behind the building, and through that threatened the building itself. And the people in the community would run out and put the fire out and the police would start the fire again. Three times that happened. And the police, the people would try to put the fire out. They actually tore a huge branch out of the tree and were dragging it across the street. And the police would shoot tear gas at them to chase them away so that our building, our vehicles and our building could burn down. They were bad that night. 300 of them out there. And then the people rose up and met them with a fierce armed resistance. You understand? You know what I'm saying? Met them with a fierce armed resistance. It was a serious resistance, you understand? Because they intended, first, they failed in their attempt to isolate us politically, criminalize us, and shoot us off to prison. They failed. Then they tried to create a situation where they could provoke 
something that would allow them to attack us militarily. They were going to win it, get it rid of us by a military attack. And when they attacked us militarily, they got their asses kicked by the people right there in the streets. I mean this. I mean this. You, you have to understand what happened. It was serious. The, the people brought down a police helicopter with gunshot, gunshot, gunfire, brought it down, forced it down with gunshot. They wounded one cop, shot one cop. And the transcript of a police communication over the radio that appeared in the paper the next day had the commander screaming over the radio, pull the troops back. We under heavy fire, you understand? We are under heavy fire, under heavy fire. to the teeth, used every bit of tear gas against us that they had in the city. Pull the troops back, we're under heavy fire. And we're talking about the youngsters, they, they, they were called the ghost faces. Ghost faces. Because they tied their shirts around their faces and bandanas around their faces and jumped dead in their chest. So, the police never even were able to enter the building. If the crime was being committed, the building wasn't in it. Nobody in the building was arrested. It wasn't about arresting anybody. It was about destruction. They meant to kill Maine on that day. They wanted a military victory, and they got their asses kicked. Serious guerrilla warfare. Serious guerrilla warfare. I mean, as serious as any confrontation has happened any place in the world. So they lost. The police lost. And because they failed, because they just knew all they had to do was crush the Uhuru movement, then it would be over. It would be just business as usual, but they failed. They were defeated politically, and then they were defeated militarily, and then after that. But it was serious because people in the Uhuru movement we found ourselves sleeping in safe houses. We couldn't stay any place where they knew where we were because they come 4 o'clock in the morning. They'll come 4 o'clock in the morning. They'll kill you dead. You understand? But they made a mistake. They came at 6.30, and the people were awake, and the people were ready for them, and the people kicked their asses. You understand?